So our trailers look a little bit different than other people's trailers. With our tiny house trailers, you got a lot of things that are sticking up. And that is meant to give you a nice strong connection between your tiny house and your trailer. This is all part of our unified construction method, now patented. It's not just about these things that stick up. It's part of a whole system that really appreciates that you are making not a house. I know it says tiny house, but you're not making a house. You're making a road vehicle that is going to vibrate. The trailer and the tiny house work together to stay together in that vibrating situation. First thing is a bit of plywood goes down here. The floor joist goes all the way across here. And then this is where your wall is. Uh, this bolts in horizontally, which is the strongest and safest way to connect a tiny house and a trailer is to have a horizontal connection system. And then this is the wall. We know where your wall is going to be. We put something to grab hold of it nice and strong. Two here, two there, eight all up holding those walls right where you want them to be. If you think that you're going to use a wood screw that's going to go, just go right down into your steel of your tiny house and that's going to be a sufficient connection between the tiny house and the trailer, bad idea, don't do it. This is the A-frame. You want to make sure that these bits of steel make their way back and get welded to this front suspension hanger right here. If your A-frame only comes back and stops here somewhere, it's a really an inferior design and not really as strong as you'll need it to be. We've worked with a lot of automotive engineers and this is the way to do it. If people are doing it a different way, they're trying to save on materials and it's really a penny wise dollar foolish to be not bringing the A-frame all the way back to be welded to that front suspension hanger. Look out for that one. So we've got another trailer going out the door today. The person who's coming to pick it up is coming from interstate. So one of the deals that you get if you're coming from interstate, you get to stay in our tiny house and then take the trail in the morning. This one's a six meter trailer, flat top style. Wanted to show you a few things about the trailer, particularly the distance between the top of the tire and the bottom of the wheel guard. This is a place where people can get in a lot of trouble. Yeah, you want to get the floor as low as you can, but this you don't want to run afoul of. You want to be able to make sure that you got plenty of clearance. On these, we've added in a little bit extra. Right now it's a, about 140 mil, so they got a lot of room to run. One of the things that we do is we look after your toes, in a way, in wintertime. Wherever there's steel, you're going to have a cold spot in your floor there. Uh, we've gone to quite a bit of effort to uh, include thinking about insulation in the unified construction method. Today I'm going to uh, show you how the floor goes together, because you see all these bits sticking up and you go, yeah, okay, but how's that work? We're going to show you how that works. We've got a piece of plywood that goes down first thing. All these little bits that stick up, we've taken and uh, made holes so that, they, so that it slips on. And we're gonna do that now. Do you wanna prime and paint the underside of this? I would use a proper primer and two coats of a top coat. It's not gonna see a lot of water, but this is your chance to seal it up. In order to keep the water from getting up in there, you wanna take a nice bit of caulk and seal that so that you get a nice airtight seal. So this is a 70 by 35 piece of timber. You want to be using these nylock nuts. It makes it uh, very vibration resistant. Because we've designed the trailer for a particular tiny house, these outriggers, they sit right where we want them to, which is right over top of these floor joists, so that it's totally supported all the way out to the edge of the trailer. The other thing we do when we do our plan is that we put the, the stud wall that goes all the way up to the rafter. It also sits right on that point so that it's um, fully supported all the way down to the trailer. And when you do that, you can get away with doing a single top plate. Generally, a double top plate is there so that the rafter doesn't uh, take a point load. But if you've got it all lined up, well, then you can go to a single top plate and, and lighten up your, your structure. So this is a 60 mil. This is a 70 mil piece of timber, so 70 by 35, which leaves 10 more mil. We recommend using this double-sided aluminum foil foam, and it gives you a bit of a radiant barrier on your floor. So your flooring goes on there. It makes a beautiful insulated floor in such a way that your flooring is not sitting on any steel. Part of the unified construction method is that we're holding on to the wall. Because it's going to be vibrating, it's that upward lifting force that we want to guard against. And so these uh, bolt onto the stud, it goes straight up and down, and it rises right up to the uh, rafter. So we bolt onto it in two places in each of these, eight all up. It's a very strong way to hold your tiny house and your trailer together. Vibrate all you want, not coming apart.
Try and think also about what you're gonna do for your underfloor storage, whether you want any or not. If you're gonna have an off the grid tiny house, you really wanna be planning on where you're gonna put those batteries. And the best place to put batteries for an off the grid system, the safest place to put them is between the axles. The reason for that is it's weight neutral. It's not uh, at one end or the other, you know, making the, the tiny house unbalanced. It's also a very safe place between the axles in terms of road debris and that sort of thing. So a tandem axle, that means two, you get this storage here. With three axles, you get twice that amount of storage for whatever you want, dunas or heavy bulky things or seasonal uh, gear, but also batteries. Another unique feature of our tiny houses is um, this connection with the central uh, suspension hanger here. Uh, we put a stiffener in there and so that it really grabs hold of this chassis rail uh, on both sides and it really stiffens this connection. The other thing we do is we give you an extra loop of wire to do your outline marker lights. The outline marker lights are, you know what those are, when you're going down the road and you see a truck and you see the shape of the truck at night because of the lights. Well, you have to put that on your tiny house. See, a lot of tiny houses don't have it. They should, particularly if they're gonna be registered. So with a trailer of this type, you have three braking systems. This is the manual brake, uses a cable, and it's uh, mechanical. So when you park up, you put on that. So you, you're going down the road and you press on the brake. You wanna activate the brakes on the trailer itself. You're not gonna be able to stop a tiny house with just the brakes on your tow vehicle. So you have to have some kind of braking on the wheels. So that's the second sort. The third type of braking system is the emergency braking system. And this is basically a battery that if the tiny house becomes separated from the tow vehicle, a pin gets pulled at the very front um, and activates this battery to tell the electric brakes to turn on and it stops it. You need a jack stand. Forget the jockey wheel, it's not gonna be sufficient. It's gonna crush the wheel. What you need is a jack stand for a tiny house trailer. Um, we, we put it in a place where it can swivel out of, the play, out of the way and you can still use this area for storage. This is an area where we usually put the components for your solar electric system, the solar battery system. So for the finish with these tiny houses, trailers, um, you'll notice it's got that silvery color. That's because we're beginning with something called Duragal. When you weld it, it vaporizes that galvanizing finish. So you have to go back as we do and apply an additional coat of cold gal, and then we paint those welds. The alternative to that to get a galvanized finish would be a hot dip galvanizing. You probably want to steer clear of that because there's no guarantee that the trailer is going to be true and level and square. Uh, it takes so much heat in that process that trailers can go out of square. With a Fred's Tiny House trailer, you do get a spare wheel. It comes along with the purchase, don't forget that. We make the best trailers in Australia, maybe worldwide. Do your research about trailers. I think if you, if you do that, you're gonna see that ours are different and different in really good ways. If you wanna talk about it further, come and see us. Liberate yourself.